Okay, so welcome everybody once again to a class on Christian counseling. I'd like to welcome all those who have joined us on the e-learning platform, as well as all who are here right now on the live session with me. Uh, I'm looking forward to um, a wonderful interaction and uh, experiential learning because Christian counseling is all about um, uh, you know, conversations and interactions and, uh, uh, you know, there isn't a cookie cutter method for counseling uh, and each person who you're going to meet is unique and different and the way these sessions may go, it would be very different from, sorry, one to another. So uh, we're going to be learning, we're going to be um, interacting, there are going to be many examples that we need to bring up, like I said, you know, uh, counseling theory is one, but practicum uh, is something very, very different. So let's just start with a word of prayer and uh, let's get started. So. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you have kept and preserved each one of us, Lord, through the last um, couple of months, and you have brought us back here once again to resume learning uh, um, in a fresh season. Lord, we come to you uh, for a greater understanding and wisdom and knowledge as we touch upon this topic on Christian counseling. Thank you. because called each one of us to bear each other's burdens, to support one another, to encourage one another, to bring others to the faith and to maturity in you. Father, even as we learn and understand, Lord, we pray that you, our greatest counselor, will be in our midst and help us through this journey. Help us to understand concepts that may not be easy. Lord, help us to, uh, Lord, help us to uh, hear your voice and reveal, God, things and conditions that may be deeply strewn in our hearts, Father, so that we can come to a place of healing and freedom in you. Lord, I bless each student who is here. Lord, those who have not been able to join in, we ask, God, that um, you... Uh, stand alongside with us, be with us, God, as we go through this course in the next couple of months. I ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So good morning once again for those who've just uh, joined in. Um, like I was saying, it's always a pleasure to uh, be here and learn together. So our course is on Christian counseling and uh, uh, the, the textbook has been uploaded for you. Um, for those online students in the classroom and those uh, who are the e on the e-learning portal, it is there uh, available as well. So we're going to be following through um, that book. Um, for this course, I have prepared some, uh, some presentations, some PowerPoint presentations, because um, th there will be a lot of examples that we are going to be talking about and which, which has not been added into the book. Um, so, you know, for better reading and better um, just being on the same page, I have created uh, a PowerPoint presentation, but, uh, but the material that you need is all there within the textbook, okay? All right, so let's get started. And uh, maybe the first question um, I would I want to ask uh, each of you um, is, and you could unmute and um, you know share, is this question on what do you think uh, is counseling? What do you think is counseling? I'm sure uh, you've probably used the term counseling and I've counseled somebody or I've been counseled by somebody or someone came to me for counseling. So I'd like to hear from you as to what your understanding has been of counseling. So yes, over to you. So remember, this is an interactive class, right? And uh, the more you interact, the more we're going to be learning together. <clears throat> Okay, so Tarun, you've written to help others help themselves. Okay, Tarun. All right. Uh, that's a familiar line, Tarun. All right. Okay, yes, Samuel. Hi, good morning, Samuel. Good morning, Pastor. Uh, good to good see morning. you again. Yeah, good to see you too. 
Yeah, now you can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see you now too. Right. Um, yeah, I think um, for me, counseling would be like Tarun mentioned uh, to help others to help themselves, but also in broader term is. Um, I think it's more like a relationship, building a mm -hmm. relationship with someone, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and and through that relationship, somehow bringing in a transformation to that person's life, mm -hmm. uh, whatever that may be. So, um, so yeah, there there could be I think good counseling and bad counseling too, depending on uh, if there's a goal that the two people are moving towards. Excellent. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. And I'm seeing so many, uh, uh, you know, the, the messages here are all, uh, you know, I don't think you'll need to be on the course. Anyway, so I'm just going to read it out for the help of those uh, of the e-learning students because they're not able to see the chat. So uh, someone's written to be able to uh, guide them well, uh, guide them, uh, sorry, to guide to guide them with their will. Okay, guide them with their will. Um, Anita has written to help others to analyze and get through the situation which may be critical. Uh, uh, Hope said counseling is giving wise advice. Avina said counseling is empowering another person. Charles, the emptying of oneself selflessly to help one needing guidance. Uh, Rose, uh, you said giving guidance and direction through advice. Uh, Nisha said, I've been counseled, uh, resolved to a solution to identify problem areas and work in it to enable a person get better in a particular area. Maxson has written conversation for guiding persons. Uh, Kennedy has written to give a positive direction. Prabhaka to lead in on a right track. Chaya said counseling is a therapy where we can talk to people and help. Wonderful. Okay, you've made my work far, far easier. Christopher says it's a talk therapy. Okay, you've you've really uh, cleared the ground for me. Okay, because I think there's a there's a lot of uh, steady understanding about what counseling is. So as we keep going forward, we are going to be learning a lot more, uh, learning about what it is, learning about what biblical counseling is. That's what we are going to deal with our class today. Uh, we're also going to be looking at different skills, and that's what this entire um, course is about. How do we develop certain skills to work with others. Now, before we start, I think I would really want to share that um, counseling is an art. And uh, uh, by maybe a couple of weeks of learning a course, I think we're only scratching the surface of it. Uh, the more that you, so one of the things about counseling is yes, to understand what it entails. The second is practice. The second is going out there and um, uh, using the skills that you learned in order to work with with one another. So, uh, you know, um, it's it's like being a doctor. You, you probably read up many things about how a surgery is done, but unless and until you're there doing the surgery, you haven't developed a skill of it. So it is it is something that takes time. It takes uh, practice. It takes mistakes. And um, so those of all of us, um, as we will hear, see and understand, are called to some form of a ministry of helping others. So these skills, even if you do not take it up um, professionally or let's say as a, as a pastoral ministry, these skills can always help you to deal and to work with others who are in need. OK, so as I said, we are only scratching the surface for those of you who are interested in it. I would. Um, strongly recommend that you take up more courses, um, uh, you know, by counseling institutes that are there. And there are so many that really provide good, excellent uh, sources and uh, develop yourself in that skill. So what we are going to be doing is quite a you know, a, a shrunken version. But nevertheless, we think it's it is the beginning. OK, so uh, just bear with me. I'm just going to share my screen um, so we can get started. <clears throat>
Okay. So um, before we, uh, I know a lot of the, this course has been um, uh, brought to you uh, as part of the curriculum. So those of you who have been doing the curriculum, uh, I mean, the, the uh, entire uh, theology course, the three courses, this is part of your curriculum. But I, I suppose there may be a few of you who've joined in just looking at the, at the, uh, at the title of this and say, okay, it looks interesting. I really want to understand it. Okay. And so for those, for all of us over here, my question over here as the, um, as the question asks is what really built your interest to understand counseling? What's actually brought you here to know about it? There is something that, uh, that has been stirred inside of you in order to come and understand this. So what really built your interest to understand counseling? So either you can put it up on the chat or you could unmute yourselves and uh, speak. <clears throat> yes. Pastor, can I come up? Hi, uh, sorry, I'm not sure who, who's speaking. It is Hope. Is this Max Hope, yes, Hope, yes. Go, go ahead, Hope. Yeah. So what builds Pastor your interest? Yeah. I can say what built my interest is that uh, when you study the Bible and the ministry of Jesus is full of counseling. So I am interested in order to to, to save God in a in a, a manner way, as Jesus did. His ministry was full of counseling. So I'm interested in knowing more Jesus because we call even one of his names is a great counselor so that's why i'm interested to yeah thank you thank you hope thank you yes so somebody said uh, the methodology of counseling so i'm i super maxin said methodology of counseling so i'm hoping i i hope i think what he means to say, say is what it what is the process of it how does one do it is is why uh, he seems to be interested. Samuel said, the world needs counseling, the young world, the right kind of counseling. Okay, so everywhere you see someone needs help, someone needs direction, someone needs guidance. Okay, any other thoughts? Okay. Good. All right. So some of us, like Charles said, he said, I was counseled. I think even Nisha mentioned earlier that some of us here have been counseled. I have been uh, counseled as well. Um, I am going in for another season of counseling as well. And uh, and to know how to do it, because I'm sure you've had the benefit of um, receiving uh, support and help from others. Christopher has written to learn the skills to provide effective therapy based on Christian principles. Okay. Anita says, all of us are in the same boat or world. Uh, some things we counsel with experience and some things we two face and discover together. So being there, how do we do that? Okay. So how do we do counseling? Um, there are others who've said confusion and daily problems that seem unmanageable, yet not being resolved. Okay, and you use drugs. I think that's what he meant. Okay, uh, to build oneself stronger. Uh, Elisha, Elisha has written, he's in youth ministry, and I see young people need counseling in many areas, so I need to learn the skills to be able to assist them. Wonderful. So I think a lot of you are here because you have been in a place where someone has approached you for guidance or for support. And there may be times that you're able to manage it well. There may be times that you just don't know what to say. And coming here to learn some of those skills is um, what you've, you are looking to do. OK, so I want to start with an example. OK. Um, so let's suppose uh, you know, you're finishing off from your work. And uh, there is this young lady who comes to you and says, uh, you know, I, I, just, I just see that you're a person um, quite mature and balanced. I just want to share something with you. And she starts to talk to you. And an essence of what she says is what I've written here, OK? So Susan says, uh, I don't know what's wrong with my husband. He just doesn't allow me enough space to just be me. He wants to pry into what I'm doing, who I am talking to. I'm having quite enough 
you know, I have second thoughts about this marriage. Now, someone comes in and talks to you about this. All right. Um, what is what is the first thing that you will say? What is the first thing that you will say? And I'd like you to put it either if you're sharing, I'd like you to put it in a first person statement. How are you, suppose I'm Susan. What are you going to tell me? Okay, how are you going to respond to me, Susan? So you can write, hey, Susan, uh, you know, this is what, or Susan, this. So uh, uh, respond like how you would respond to Susan. Okay, so Anita says, what makes you feel that way? All right. <coughs> Others? So I'd like, I'd like as many of you to respond on this, okay? Others? Can I come up first, sir? Yes, please go ahead. I'm sorry, I cannot see who's uh, speaking because only my it is, window is coming up. So it is hope. Is it, it is hope. 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 Yes, hope. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hope. Go ahead. Okay. First time here, I will just respond that uh, yeah, you say he has second thoughts. I will just ask what are the second thoughts you have about your marriage, and I will listen to her reply. So that okay. I can cancel her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as Hope would say, um, what are your second thoughts about marriage? Um, and you'll hear that and then you will respond. Okay. Shay says, Susan, I would like to hear more. Come over here and sit. Okay. Wonderful. All right. What about the others? <coughs> can uh, I say something? This is Charles. Yes, Charles. Go ahead. Susan, thank you so much for allowing, for seeing me that I can listen to you. Yes, here I am. It's okay. You can go ahead and tell me more. I would love to hear more about what is happening to you. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Good. Thank you, Charles. Nisha said, I would pull more information and help her to vent her situation and listen to her most women want to most women want to be heard and then i would probe her what she would want to do about it okay samuel said i would start off by trying to understand susan as a person her husband as a person how long they've been married etc uh avni says be patient we will find out more on it Maxon says, I heard you complaining about uh, the husband. Please tell me more if you trust me. Uh, Chaya says, I will thank Susan for trusting me and I will try to know more about her. Okay, wonderful. All right. Any more responses? Don't worry about it being right or wrong. That's why we're learning. Okay. Um, so th sometimes I've heard responses like, uh, hey, Susan, uh, you know, you having second thoughts about marriage? Do you know what the Bible says about marriage? You know, we got to be careful about that. So sometimes that that happens to be a response. Okay, I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that these are sometimes the response that comes about. Or there are responses that go into maybe certain questions that come about. Uh, Susan, you know, maybe uh, not questions, sorry, suggestions or advice that says, hey, Susan, uh, you know what? You should remember you're married right now and uh, you're like one team, you're like one body. And um, does it really matter that he spies on you like that? I mean, are you doing anything for, for you to feel afraid? Uh, Okay, Hope says, hey, Susan, all men are like that. Don't mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So, you know, our responses, uh, okay, Prabhaka says, would listen to her, uh, would listen to her and try to guide her to meet a female counselor so she can be more open. Okay, Avni says, sometimes we hear and just pray. Uh, Pracy says, first of all, I will pray after that. I will tell her to pray and ask the guidance from God. Pratik says, I will say every step of our life is ordained by God, so have a prayerful fellowship with him. Okay, so we've seen here um, questions that come up. We've seen suggestions that come up. 
we've probably seen some form of judgment that comes up from what I said. Um, uh, okay, we, we may see different forms of responses. And I think what's important, so I'm just reading out the responses because I think these are these are perfect uh, and you know it really helps us to learn. I know some of you can hear it, read it, but this is for the sake of the e-learning students. Uh, Taisha said, um, okay, Taisha said, Susan, I'm here to help. I understand you're having second thoughts about your marriage. This is what I found out. Are you open to trying my suggestions? Okay. Uh, Beth says, what kind of space do you feel you need? What makes you need this space? Have you always felt like this or just recently? Is this a way he tries to um, show you love and interest in your life? Okay, so this is another perspective that is coming out that the other person, uh, that the counselor is hoping to bring about. Christopher says, um, Susan, I need to understand more please give me uh, some examples of your husband's behavior. Avinash says, Susan, take more quality time for your husband and try to figure it, figure out what he wants. If you both are not coming to the point of conclusion, then get a counselor with expert. OK. All right. So Chaya says, look into the word of God, what God says about it. OK, so great. I think we have an entire gamut of different responses. Now, am I going to give you what a right response or an effective response is? No. OK, we are going to we're going to keep I'm going to keep the suspense. And as we learn and understand more, we're going to fi figure this out. OK, so let me start by uh, just taking the term of what counseling uh, what is counseling? <clears throat> and we'll before we look at what is counseling, let's look at what counseling is not. Okay, because I think it fairly helps us to understand uh, better when we're looking at what counseling is not, and then we'll we'll figure out uh, ways. Okay, so the first thing is counseling is not giving advice. Um, you're not. Uh, number one, to understand that we, uh, and as we go through these classes, you'll 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 flesh out a lot more of truths as to why it's not advice giving, and it is not something where a person comes to you and you give the answers to their problems. Okay, remember you are as human as your counselee, and uh, you're not there to offer advice or to offer answers to their problems. Because often, the problems that you're hearing, um, like for example, Susan, she's having second thoughts about her marriage. Your understanding to the problem is based on your experience, is based on your attitudes, is based on your upbringing, it's based on your framework, right? So I maybe. Uh, as a person, I, I may advise you and say, hey, Susan, um, you know, you can't have second thoughts about your marriage. That's not what scripture talks about. Another person who may have experienced significant struggle in her own relationship, who may be a counselor, may say, hey, Susan, you know, uh, I think you should give yourself some space. I think, uh, you know, you shouldn't allow the man to treat you like that, right? So. It really matters who you're going to. That's one. But remember, even if you are going to the right kind of a counselor, we are all um, we have our specific framework or our understanding. So counseling is not giving advice or answers to problems. Counseling is not being judgmental. You and I are, as scripture says, you and I are not in a place of being a judge to um, give a verdict on what is right or on what is wrong in, in their lives. That should come from within the spirit of the person and is the work of the Holy Spirit. So it's not us being judgmental about who they are, what they've done, what situation they are in. So being careful of taking away uh, the person from the problem. Remember when we judge, <clears throat> we are bringing, adding in, we're judging the person. Many times it's a, hey, 
you know, Susan, you can't divorce your husband or you can't, um, you cannot separate from him. You are being disobedient. So, which is truth. Yes, I agree. It may, it is truth, but being careful on how you articulate. So being careful not to be judgmental. Counseling is not attempting to sort out the problems of your client or your or your counselee. Okay, so uh, sorry, the word client. Uh, I'm I'm thinking I shouldn't have used that word. We we would use counselee. All right, but it counselling is not attempting to sort out their problems. You're not there uh, as a as a problem solver. You're not the specialist or the expert that is able to tell them. You know, this is the way, go in it, okay? Counseling is a lot more to do with empowering. It is enhancing another person's ability to solve their own problems. You are there more as a facilitator to help them to do a bit of searching on what their lives are, on how far away they are from the truth of God's word, far away from what God wants or the place that God wants them to be. Okay. Counseling is not expecting or encouraging a client or a counselee to behave in a way that you have behaved when you've had a similar problem in your life. So there, there are many times that you're going to have people come to you with problems very similar to the ones that you're going through. All right. And you know your journey of how you've moved from um, a problem to a solution or a, or a pain to a healing or a hurt to a recovery. So you know your own journey. And counseling is not telling the person, hey, this is what worked for me. Go ahead and try this. OK. Why? Because that's something that may have worked for you but it isn't necessarily something that works for another however even though i'm saying this there is a place of self-disclosure in counseling where you use but that's not something that you use primarily in order to help the person you use that as one of the skills as as a very basic small part of counseling where you disclose how you have been helped in the past or helped um, in your in your situations. But it's not encouraging them to behave in the way that you have behaved. OK, um, so being careful about that is important. Counseling is not getting emotionally involved with the client. Now, what do I mean by this emotional involvement? There is a difference between empathy and emotional involvement. Emotional involvement is um, like, for example, let's say for those of you who are parents, you know, you have to, something goes wrong with your child. And you're in a place of emotional involvement that you would do anything to get your child away from the struggle that they are going through. OK, that's involvement. That is you go out there and resolve their problem and stand in the front line of the battle to work that out. Okay, that's what we mean by emotional involvement. Counseling is not that. Counseling is, yes, there is empathy, which we will talk about later. There is empathy where you need to put yourself in the shoes of the other person, feeling like what they're feeling, yet not taking the reins of the problem and, and going on with it. You're not taking the reins of the horse and, and uh, ensuring that you're doing, doing that part of it, right? So it is not getting too emotionally involved that it becomes your problem. It becomes your need to resolve their issue, OK? So that's what it, it, it is not. Uh, the last one is looking at a counselee's problem from your own perspective or base, basing it on your own value system. Counseling is not that. That you look at it from your own perspective uh, or your own lens um, and, and helping them based on what you stand for. So this is what counseling is not. So what is counseling? 
and, and I think as, as many of us spoke about, that are the main thing about counseling is that it is a relationship. It is a supportive relationship. Okay, it's a relationship of trust between a counselor and a counselee. And one where the counselor helps the other through a purposeful and meaningful conversation. So it needs to be a conversation. It's not a question and answer process, right? It's not what you would do with a doctor. With a doctor, you'd say, hey, doctor, what's wrong with me? The doctor will say, you've got COVID. Hey, doctor, what do I do about it? Doctor will say, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what he would say, right? It's counseling is not a question and answer process. It is a supportive relationship. It's a relationship of trust where the counselee is given time and space to understand with the situation that they are presenting to you, their feelings, their thoughts, their experiences, their responses, their behavior, and the counselor moves them from that place to a place of change, which is positive, which is empowering, which brings about growth. And this is all done through a conversation. Okay, so you may be you may be thinking, my my wow, what a conversation that is going to be. Absolutely. Okay. And that's exactly why there are skills that a counselor needs to have in order to make the conversation purposeful, make the conversation meaningful. Counseling, like I said, is a relationship of trust. And what is that trusting relationship? Is that the counselors, counselee sees. So I, I, I'm just to clarify the two words. Counselor is the one who's the helping person. The counselee is the one who uh, gets the help. Okay, so those are the two different words for those of us who may not be familiar. <clears throat> so it's a relationship of trust where the counselor stands in a position of acceptance, stands in a position of um, non judgmental, being in a place of non judgmental attitude. We will be looking at these principles a little later and helping the counselee move from a place of confusion to a place of understanding and to a place of action. And where the counselor stands as a support system through that process. Now, does it mean that process is always easy and is um, hassle-free? No. There may be times that the counselee may come up with perspectives or suggestions or thoughts that may be very different from recovery or healing, all right? But the counselor stands in support to help facilitate those decisions. So that's why it's a relationship of trust, that you will not let go of your counselee all because you know that they are not going in the right direction or they aren't taking the step in the right direction. You are there as a person who continues to move with them and they trust that you are there to empower them from one place to another. Okay. Now, at the, I think even as I'm speaking, I'd like you to think of the Holy Spirit as the counselor. The Holy Spirit, you know, like all of us have experienced, will speak to us, will speak God's truth to us. Yet the Holy Spirit will never push you outside of your will. It never pushes you outside of your will and continues to nudge your, nudge your conscience and helps you to come to, uh, you know, it requires your own will and your own determined understanding to change. All right. So even as we're speaking of this, <clears throat> try try and find parallels to the way the Holy Spirit works in you 
And our understanding comes from the greatest counselor, as you read in Isaiah 9, 6, it says he is the counselor, right? He's the one who convicts us of truth and converts us. And that comes from the Holy Spirit. But the responsibility to bring about that change lies within you and me. Okay. Um, so what, what do we mean by Christian? So what do we mean by Christian counseling? Now, the, the important, we're going to be looking at elements and tenets of Christian counseling, but just to put it up in, um, uh, you know, certain highlights, Christian counseling is where we depend upon the Holy Spirit to bring about God's truth to people whatever situations or problems that they are going through to bring about God's truth to people so that they can be empowered to change, empowered to come back in their right relationship with God so that they can enjoy their relationship with God and also enjoy their relationship with one another. And how do we do that is through the word of God by cultivating that conformity to his word and uh, communion with, with Christ. Okay, So there are a couple more of elements which I'm going to, uh, going to take on um, uh, one by one. Okay, But before that, I'm just going to quickly stop here and ask, would anyone have questions? So Beth, said, Beth has asked a question, how is counseling different from coaching? So, uh, you know, there are a lot of words that are used interchangeably. So there is counseling, there is therapy, there is coaching, there is psychotherapy. There are, there are a whole lot of words that are used. Now, some of them have, have slight differences, but I think what I would like to just highlight in counseling and coaching, coaching, a lot of times coaching deals with um, more than it deals with problems, it deals with enhancing growth and development. That, that does not mean counseling doesn't have that. Counseling does have it. But you would hear the words such as life coaching, um, you know, work coaching. All of that happens in, in a place where uh, coaching generally focuses a lot more on, on solutions, focuses a lot more on what you can do. Counseling differs a bit there is because in counseling, you also do go back into sources and um, roots of why the problem has come about or why there isn't growth and development in itself. So that's that's one of the basic differences that coaching is is very forward movement. It's very solution focused that you look towards finding solutions rather than looking back at the source or at the problem and figuring out where it has come from. Okay, so it's it's a lot more forward movement, whereas counseling does a lot more digging into the depth and the roots of why the problem has occurred, what has been the patterns of thought and behavior, and then finding uh, you know, finding ways of beliefs and then going into finding solutions. So that would be some of the basic differences between counseling and coaching. Is there anyone else who have a who have a question? Else, I will I will move forward. Okay, I don't think anyone has a question. Okay, so we'll we'll move forward and begin to look at. What are some of the core elements uh, of counseling, uh, of, um, um, sorry, of, of Christian counseling or biblical counseling? Okay, so we, we, we need to have a framework and understand. And what I'd like to do at the end of the class is also give you a difference between Christian counseling and secular counseling. Okay, so that we have a, a fair amount of understanding of what is. Um, you know how how does how do these two differ? Uh, I mean, there are some very um, clear cut answers, but I'd like to bring that up uh, a little later. Okay, so in Christian counseling, or as a Christian who works as a counselor, uh, some of the questions that we need to first of all understand is one is 
how do people generally know what what we know how do we know what we know we know things because of our experience we know things because of our uh, maybe our intuition we know things because of our logical ex reasoning or we know things because of some knowledge or some science okay whereas for the christian yes we understand a lot of things in the same way um that that a person that a person who is not a believer in christ may understand but the bible or uh, the bible and what god has spoken in scripture becomes our base for why, what we know like for i'll give you a, a very simple example uh that um, when you talk about you know now especially so i i work within ministry i help in ministry but i also work outside of ministry which means i practice counseling to a whole lot outside of those who are believers so i see a lot of people who are unbelievers and when someone comes with a problem or a situation that i know is sin or is something that is far away from what god desires for his children someone on the outside is unable to see it okay like it says in scripture their eyes are blinded from the from the truth and what makes us different is that we are able to bring about an understanding of human needs human personality just by looking at scripture and we do see that um uh that there is an explanation for everything <clears throat> that people go through there is uh, people have whatever struggles that people are going through there is an explanation so we so when we are um giving counsel as a christian counselor we identify that god is at the center of that counseling the bible the truth that is written in the bible is the center of that uh, center of of christian counseling so that's the basic element of biblical counseling okay the the next um sorry i'm just trying to move my yeah okay so god is at the center of counseling the next one what we do understand is every discipline anything that has to do with understanding the human mind anything that has to do with um understanding socialization understanding community society behavior any discipline okay should be under the authority of scripture that is the element of biblical counseling so there are many disciplines out there that um that are way um contrary to what scripture talks about and there are very many uh, you know if you if you are a student of psychology you will hear of so many new age techniques that people bring into counseling all right so remembering that all disciplines are under the authority it should be tested under the authority of scripture we ensure that we uh whatever new theory that comes up we test that under the authority of scripture does it defy what the bible and scripture says okay the third that we would look at is to understand when people come with problems that sin is the primary concern that we need to deal with and and that is a primary problem that as a counselor that you're going to be dealing with so to understand that man is depraved man is sinful and we read that in scripture that all have fallen short of the all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god and this is essential to understanding the human personality the human problem and also knowing what is it that can only restore that human condition okay so sin is the primary concern that needs to be dealt with now that does not mean that when you see a counselee and they're coming and telling you something 
you say, hey, you're being sinful, go repent. That is the truth, but you've got to, you, you've got to draw out an understanding from within them to see how far they are from what God wants of their lives. Okay, the fourth one is to know that Jesus Christ is the answer for every problem. Jesus is the answer for every, the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross is the answer for every um, problem that, that we, we have. And it is fundamental to understand this because um, man is reconciled to God only because of what Jesus did on the cross. So what would that mean? It is repentance, it's forgiveness, and being justified because of the righteousness of God. So these are certain elements that we understand, that we, we keep as a base. Okay, And the last one being um, The last one being that the process of change should aim at progressive sanctification. Now, I'd, I'll explain that a bit more. That, uh, okay, I, I think I'll, I'll get into. So let's, let's understand what happens when we are saved. When a person is saved, there is immediate, there's, uh, justification becomes instantaneous. It's, it's done immediately, okay? And what is justification? It is where God declares us a sinner, perfectly righteous because of the blood of Jesus. And that happens with, at the point of time that you confess, you ask for forgiveness of sin, and we are adopted into, the, into uh, God's family because we have um, our, our righteousness comes as a because of our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ. So that's the instantaneous one. That's, that's justification. Now, does justification immediately mean that you will have a change of life or a change of situation or a change of heart or a change of behavior? No. That's what we mean by sanctification. And sanctification is a process. It's something that is gradual, that it, it def what and how is it defined? It is defined as something where we we are renewed, we are um, changed, we continue to be worked upon by the Spirit of God. Okay, so as it's defined here, it's that gracious and continuous operation of the Holy Spirit. And what does He do? Purifies us, renews us into becoming like Christ, into being Christ-like, into being in the image of God, and through that enabling us to change and perform good works. So there are here two aspects of sanctification, where we are being set apart from. So we're set apart from sin, set apart from what has been our uh, uh, past, and we are being set apart to, being set apart to holiness, set apart to being godly, set apart being completely uh, like Christ. And that happens gradually. And we, we understand, I mean, for all of us who've been believers, that, that for some, there have been some situations where there has been an instantaneous change, right, in some area of their lives. But there are periods of time that it is a gradual process. There becomes, you, you know, holiness. You need to move, be set apart into, into, into holiness, where we, where we progress from one level into another, from glory to glory, from strength to strength, till we become Christ-like. Okay? Uh, do we have any questions up until now? If not, I think... Uh, we could just move for a break and probably come back in 10 minutes. Anybody has any questions? I think Christopher, you, sorry, I think I missed a question. Christopher has said, let me just read that out. 
uh, in an earlier slide, you mentioned counseling is not giving advice and not problem solving. Would this not be fundamental in what the counselee needs? Okay, so yes, uh, the 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 counselee does come to seek a, a solution to their problem, but it is not something that you give. It's not something that you provide. You help empower them to resolve their situation or their problem. You are acting as a facilitator. You are opening their eyes to maybe things that they have not seen. You're opening probably scripture for someone who's a believer and who's in the word. You're opening up what, what, what God desires and helping them to find their solution. So yes, it is fundamental to what they need, but you do not take the role of an advisor or a solution giver. You take the road of a facilitator where you're helping them to come to a place of finding their own uh, way forward. Of course, for those who are believers with the help of God, with the word of God, with truth in it. Okay. I hope I answered that, Christopher. Uh, yeah, I don't think there is any other question. All right. Okay. So shall we just close for a break? It's 10.53 on my, uh, on my clock. Uh, and we will return in 10 minutes, so 11.03. So quickly grab a cup of coffee and some biscuits and do return back.